The Young and the Restless Spoilers Tuesday Full Update 9-24-2024 Billy Abbott had lost his spark. The pressures of running Chancellor Industries had drained him, leaving him a shell of his former self. His eyes no longer held the mischievous glint that once defined him. Noticing his downward spiral, Phyllis Summers decided to step in. She took full control of the company, urging Billy to take a step back and focus on rejuvenating his spirit. You need a break, Billy, she insisted. Go find what makes you happy again. Phyllis's sudden takeover didn't sit well with everyone. Lily Winters, Billy's former partner and confidant, was furious. How could you hand over everything to Phyllis, she demanded. She's practically a stranger to the company, Billy sighed. Phyllis and I have history. I trust her to steer the ship while I figure things out. Lily scoffed. History or not, this is reckless. Meanwhile, a cloud of worry hung over Genoa City. Sharon Newman had gone missing without a trace. Tessa, Mariah, and Nick were frantic, scouring every corner of the city. She's not answering her phone, Mariah said, panic evident in her voice. Nick tried to reassure her. We'll find her. We just have to keep looking. But as days passed with no sign of Sharon, their concern deepened. Unbeknownst to them, Sharon was hiding in an old, abandoned basement on the outskirts of town. The dimly lit space was cluttered with remnants of forgotten lives, but Sharon didn't mind. She sat amid scattered papers and maps, her eyes fixated on a family photo of Daniel Romolotti, Heather Stevens, and their daughter Lucy. They think they can ruin me, she whispered to herself, but I'll show them. Sharon's mind was a maze of dark thoughts. Consumed by paranoia and resentment, she had become fixated on the idea that Daniel and his family were the source of her troubles. They've taken everything from me, she muttered. It's time they paid the price. Little did she know, Lucy had been observing her from a distance. The young girl had noticed Sharon's odd behavior weeks ago and decided to follow her. From hiding spots across the street to shadowing her in the park, Lucy had pieced together enough to know that something was terribly wrong. One afternoon, hidden behind a stack of crates near the basement window, Lucy overheard Sharon's chilling monologue. Once they're gone, everything will be set right, Sharon said, her gaze distant. No more obstacles. No more lies. Lucy's heart pounded in her chest. She clamped a hand over her mouth to stifle a gasp. She wants to hurt us, she realized. I have to warn Mom and Dad. Back at the Abbott Mansion, Phyllis was strategizing. She had big plans for Chancellor Industries and intended to make bold moves in Billy's absence. Jack Abbott approached her cautiously. Are you sure about this? He asked. Taking over while Billy's indisposed? Phyllis met his gaze. Someone has to keep the company afloat. Besides, this might be the push Billy needs to get back on his feet. Jack nodded slowly. Just be careful. Lily's not too happy about this. Phyllis smirked. Lily will come around. She always does. Meanwhile, Billy found himself wandering the streets of Genoa City, memories of his past swirling in his mind. He ended up at Crimson Lights, the local coffee shop, where he ran into Mariah and Tessa. Their worried expressions caught his attention. What's wrong? he asked. It's Sharon, Tessa replied. She's missing. We can't find her anywhere. Billy frowned. Have you checked with Ray? Maybe he has some idea. Mariah shook her head. Ray's out of town on a case. We're on our own. Feeling a familiar sense of purpose, Billy offered to help. I'll ask around, see if anyone's seen her. It was a small step, but it felt good to focus on someone else's problems for a change. At that moment, Lucy burst into the coffee shop, out of breath and visibly shaken. Dad, she exclaimed upon spotting Billy, I need to talk to you and Mom right now. Heather, who had just entered behind Billy, rushed to her daughter's side. Lucy, what's going on? she asked, concern etched on her face. Lucy pulled them aside, her voice trembling. It's Sharon. I, I've been following her. She's planning something terrible. Billy and Heather exchanged worried glances. What do you mean, sweetheart? Billy asked gently. She blames us for something. I heard her talking about getting rid of our family. Tears welled up in Lucy's eyes. I'm scared, Dad. I think she's going to try and hurt us. Heather hugged her daughter tightly. Why didn't you tell us sooner? I didn't want to worry you. I thought maybe I was wrong, but after today, I'm sure of it. Billy's expression hardened. We need to go to the police. At the police station, they relayed everything to Chief Paul Williams. We'll put out an APB on Sharon. 
Paul assured them. But in the meantime, you all need to be careful. We'll have patrols keep an eye on your house. As night fell, Sharon emerged from her hideout a determined look in her eyes. She clutched a small vial in her hand. Tonight's the night, she whispered. No more waiting. Back at the Romilotti residence, tension hung in the air. Police cars were discreetly parked nearby, and the family was on high alert. Billy paced the living room. I can't just sit here and do nothing, he said. Heather placed a hand on his arm. We have to trust that the police will handle it. Suddenly, a faint noise came from the backyard. Lucy's eyes widened. Did you hear that? Billy moved toward the window, peering into the darkness. Stay here, he instructed. Lock the doors. He stepped outside cautiously, scanning the area. The rustling of leaves caught his attention. Sharon, he called out. If you're out there, let's talk. From the shadows, Sharon stepped forward. Hello, Billy, she said calmly. It's been a while. Billy maintained a safe distance. Sharon, let's get you some help. Whatever's going on, we can figure it out together. She shook her head slowly. It's too late for that. You took everything from me. Now I'm just returning the favor. Before Billy could react, police lights flooded the backyard. Officers surrounded Sharon, weapons drawn. Drop what's in your hand, one of them ordered. Sharon looked at the vial, then back at Billy. A moment of clarity washed over her face. Maybe, maybe I did go too far, she whispered. She released the vial, letting it shatter on the ground. Officers moved in swiftly, placing her in handcuffs. As they led her away, she glanced back at Billy. I'm sorry, she said softly. Back inside, Billy reunited with Heather and Lucy. It's over, he assured them. She's in custody. Lucy hugged her parents tightly. I was so scared, she admitted. Heather kissed the top of her head. We're safe now, thanks to you. In the days that followed, life in Genoa City began to stabilize. Sharon was admitted to a psychiatric facility where she could receive the help she desperately needed. The community grappled with the events, each person reflecting on how easily things could unravel. Billy, inspired by the ordeal, found a renewed sense of purpose. He returned to Chancellor Industries, ready to face his responsibilities head on. No more, no more running, he told Phyllis. It's time I step up. Phyllis smiled knowingly. Glad to have you back. The company needs you. Lily, hearing of Billy's return, approached him cautiously. I hope this means you're ready to take things seriously, she said. Billy nodded. I am, and I'm sorry for leaving you in the lurch, she softened. Just don't make a habit of it. As for Lucy, the experience had brought her family closer than ever. Together, they embraced the future with cautious optimism, knowing that while darkness may lurk, their bond was strong enough to face it. Epilogue Genoa City slowly returned to its usual rhythm, but the memory of Sharon's descent served as a reminder of the fragility of the human mind. Friends and family visited her regularly, offering support in her journey toward healing. And while challenges would undoubtedly arise again, the residents knew they could overcome them, as long as they faced them together.